My favorite two lenses that I like to use with my A-mount system are these two Minota Vintage lenses. They're the best, but they have the two differences that I like the most about them. And I'm going to tell you about them in this video. Why do I choose these two? And I had them for since I was about 12 years old. So, there's a history behind these two lenses. So, let's get into this video and let me show you and let me explain in detail why I love these two lenses. So let's talk about my Minota MD45 F2 lens. Now this is a compact, slightly thin pancake lens. Now this lens has six elements in five groups. Also has five blades. Now this focus distance is 0.6 meters, which is about 2.1 feet. And it's slightly light and very, very sharp. Now it does go to F2 to F16. And when you get about to F16, it gets a little soft, but it's still usable and very sharp. Now, this lens came out in the year 82 when I was just about 2 years old. And I got this lens when I was about 15, so I had this lens for a very long time. I can rely on this lens just because of its great optical performance and quality. Yes, this lens is vintage and is manual lens, but when using the Sony lines, I can use focus peek in, and that will help me get great accuracy when it comes down to focus and sharpness. Of August 1977, Minota introduced this 50 f1.4 MD Rokinon X lens. It was the first wholly new lens designed for the MD system. And I can attach this to my Sony E-mount and A-mount systems using focus beacon. This is a full manual lens. Now this lens does contain 7 elements in 5 groups in this optical construction of the MC lens. It is more compact design, slightly shorter and 60 grams lighter at 245 grams. Now, as I grew up with this lens using my XG1 and XG7 Minota lenses, I found the lens to be much softer at f1.4 to I get about f2.8. But when I sub it down to f11 to f16, it's much softer in the background, but the subject stays sharp in the center. So keep that in mind. This is one of my lenses that I can count on and rely on when I'm doing portrait photography. This is an adapter from PhotoDeox. Now this is a premium grade PhotoDeox Pro adapter for A-mount systems with a built-in coating glass element with a 1.4 focal length correction. Now the glass inside this adapter is removable for micro photography if you do so. But the construction of this is an anodized aluminum construction but it also comes with a 24 month manufacturer warranty just in case it malfunctions. But as long as I had it, I had no issues with it other than maybe some transmission light issues when using certain lenses. But overall, it's a great adapter to use. Now you can buy other adapters without the glass so you can be much easier and flexible with your photography. And from this footage, you can see that I actually removed the inner lens uh, element from the adapter by removing that one tiny screw from the back of the adapter. And I choose to do this for the best optical performance from both lenses. You are going to need a small screwdriver set and a fiber cloth so you can remove the inner element lens from the adapter by unscrewing that element the opposite direction from the adapter and you can take it out. And that's all you need for this particular removal. Good morning everyone. Pet the Panda here and today I am it's a uh, 633 in the morning and I'm here going to be doing some test shots with the 45 f2 and the 50 f1.4 from the Nota Rokinon X so I am going to be testing these manual lenses using focus peaking 
and I'm waiting for the sun to come peek out from the, uh, behind this uh, compartment complex and I want to show you some of the sun glare that I'm going to be getting as well but I also want to show you the sharpness of both lenses so first I'm going to show you from uh, 45 f2 from f2 to all the way f16 so you guys can see the image quality from these two lenses and I always recommend a, a manual lens to actually understand how to focus manually when you need to if autofocus doesn't work so with the Sony line of cameras where they have focus speaking it helps a lot so other than that yes we continue with this uh with this test and see how well the images come out but do please subscribe to this channel please like sub and share this content please go to my website at 646studios.com where you can have tutorials on photography and videography also you can see my work and also if you'd like to hit me up with a paypal donation that would be nice it's on the front page a dollar two five ten twenty fifty hundred if i'm lucky but other than that let's get to this test This is video coming from the 50 f1.4 you can see where I stop it down you can see the aperture blades and then lots of sun glare this is the 50 f1.4 this is the f2 45 mil Rokinot from Minota lens and you can see as I stop down you can see the aperture blades, but there is some sun glare. Keep in mind, this is the 45mm F2. So, all these Minota lenses really that good. Now, this may be opinion on based on the photographer, but if you really want to actually get down to the bottom line of it, these Minota lenses are just fantastic no matter what you look at it. They are vintage lenses. Vintage lenses have a different type of creativity and kind of different bokeh and also, yes, they can be soft wide open, but some photographers love that softness at f1.4 and then they can add on to images because it's called layering. You can layer an image, layer an image, layer an image and make it look sharp. So, Vintage lenses are not just old school lenses, but they are very useful lenses that you can use in your photography. But a lot of photographers, excuse me, like to have vintage lenses because they want to learn how to manual lens when autofocus is not reliable. And yes, autofocus with micro lenses and 50 lenses and 35 lenses I have tried are not always reliable. They hunt sometimes. So when using a Sony's uh, system on A mount or E mount you have a feature called focus peaking. Focus peaking helps you determine what's in focus and that gives you an option to layer images taking images, 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 images back to back and you can layer them in Photoshop or Lightroom. So it's up to the photographer to decide if these two venting lenses are right for you. Now this take this with a grain of salt. I grew up with these two lenses I had them for a long, long time. It doesn't mean that I recommended these lenses. It's just me expressing a history and a story about these two lenses. Why I always recommend these two lenses. Why I always do have these two lenses in my arsenal and my Pelican. Now, if you guys would be so kind, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and don't forget to hit the notification button. 
but also go to my website at 646studios.com where I have tutorials on photography and videography. And you're going to see my time lapse. But other than that, please make a donation at uh, PayPal if you like for making this content. It would really help me out. But I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Happy shooting. And please, photography is a passion. Make it your love. And I'll see you guys in the next one.